<coughs> the Euro Arms 1858 Enfield two band rifle. Uh, this is a gun, it's a reproduction gun made by Euro Arms in Italy. I bought this uh, musket 35 years ago, a long time ago at a gun show. I was walking around board, couldn't find anything, and this one guy had this thing brand new in a box. And I said, you know, I never fired an old black powder Civil War style musket. Why don't I get one and figure out how to do it, learn, learn something new about firearms. So that's why I bought this gun, and I shot it quite a lot years ago. Um, and it's been sh sitting on a wall here for a long time. Okay, I'd say the last time I fooled with it was eight years ago or something. Uh, so I took it down and took it out, tried it out again in the start. I may pick up some other different types of guns of this type and go out and shoot them. Uh, anything, it's a lot of fun to shoot. Okay, they are. If you like old guns, these are a barrel of laughs to shoot. Um, I really enjoy it. Something different. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a close look at this gun. We'll do an overview of the gun because I've never talked about this gun uh, before or made a video. And then I went out and shot it and uh, I'll show you the bullets I'm shooting in it. And then I'll have the other videos of me out on the range with this uh, musket. So let's take a closer look at the gun. All right, as far as repros goes, not, you know, this is good quality. Um, has a case hard and locked, got the crown, and then you have the, I believe it's London Armory Company, which I believe the markings on that lock are supposed to be for the little carbine. There were three versions. There's a three-band musket that I think has a 36-inch barrel. A two-band musket, which this is, with a 33-inch barrel. And then there's a small musketoon with a 24-inch barrel. They would also be two-banded. But th this is the, the two-banded rifle, I guess they call it. And it's got some nice bluing on it. You know, your markings there. Uh, Euro, Euro Arms America, 58 caliber, black powder only. I think it's got it on there three and a half drams somewhere. Got some proof marks, serial number, Italian made gun. Now your rear sight here, not adjustable for windage, but I believe it's a good copy of what goes on these and I guess very similar to the uh, sight that was on the Snyder conversion because these guns were all converted at one time. Got a brass nose cap and where you can mount your bayonet on there, cleaning rod. And pretty substantial barrel. It's a pretty heavy gun, pretty heavy duty gun. The front sight is uh, soldered on and fixed can't adjust it for windage. Same with the rear sight. And the problem that you may get with a lot of these repro guns is the sights are soldered on and not adjustable and if they're off, because I had, I had another musket, uh, Antonio Zali uh, Zouave musket that I mean when I would fire it the front, the rear sight would flop around and I could not hit nothing with that gun. Okay, it was it was good quality, but either the barrel or the sights or something. And a lot of these guns also are sold for reenactors. The reenactors will basically just go and fire blanks. I do yes, and there is competitions. There are black powder musket competitions in this country and that. But when you get into the lower priced ones. Uh, you may find that the sights aren't off because they didn't worry about that. They were mainly making these for a reenactor that's going to fire blanks and not really go into a competition. Brass butt plate. 
you know, brass trigger guard. All in all, a nice, nice gun. The wood's nice on this. The finish is nice. Uh, interesting piece. I like shooting it. It comes up to the shoulder well. It uses musket caps. Uh, let me get that back. Standard musket caps and everything. It's not that terrible to clean and maintain this gun. And uh, I shoot uh, minier or mini balls in it. And I'll show you the three different bullets that I have uh, that I fired in this uh, musket. And you can use any 58 caliber mini ball. You can use a 58 caliber round ball. You can load it with wads and shot like a shotgun or something. So they're pretty versatile guns, just like the originals. You can do a lot of different things with them, um, which you can't really do with a modern cartridge gun. But the black powder guns are a lot of fun to shoot. All right, we'll look at the three different bullets that uh, I ran through this here. Okay, the three different bullets I used on the left here is a Lyman mold that made an original bullet. Then I have another hollow base. You can see they're hollow base bullets. I have another hollow base that is more of a target round. It's kind of, uh, let me get here. I'll stand them up. It's got a flat nose on it, and then I got the Lee 58 caliber. Lee makes a black powder bullet that uh, supposedly them rings and ridges, and it's a solid base, solid bullet. Um, cleans the bore as you fire it. And I'll stand them up. I'll take another look at it. Yeah, I can't do it with my hand. So the one on the left, that's the original mold or original bullet that was a standard, this one here. Standard in the Civil War. This is kind of a flat base. This is more of a target bullet. When you fire this into a paper target, it's like a wad cutter. It cuts a nice, neat, round hole. So this is like a more modern version uh, for competing, for those guys that compete and shoot with these guns. And then this Lee uh, solid mold, um, it's pretty good. I've used it in a couple of these guns. It's accurate. It shoots well. That'd be a good hunting round. Uh, and even though you don't have the advantages of uh, the Mini or the Minier style, it's still a good, good bullet. I like it. And I've shot all three and had good results in the gun. Uh, now I'll show you something about these hollow base bullets. It's interesting. I got the gun here. Now when I first bought this thing years ago, I didn't know much about black powder guns. I fired like Hawkins muskets and that, and that was popular back then. But I never fired a Civil War gun using, you know, regulation ammo. And I wasn't quite sure how it worked, you know, and that's where me and my friend, my friend got a 1861 Springfield uh, repro that he bought from somebody used. So we both had muskets, and I'm the one that makes the ammo and casts the bullets. And I brought it over there, and I always thought you had to have some resistance. Like when you put a patch ball in, you know, you got to have a ball starter, and it fits in tightly. But after doing study and research, there was no internet. You had to buy books. You had to buy books specifically and hope that somebody was shooting a repro and would explain to you how to do it. But the way this works is that bullet is slightly undersized and then when you set off a 60 grain charge it blows the base out <coughs> and engages the rifle which was pretty neat and the first neat thing I found if you take a bullet right out of the mold and place it and this is a clean clean bore don't do this with a foul bore it won't do this but the gun is clean and has not been fired you know it's got a clean bore in there you take the bullet and you can hear it just gently glide down and hit the bottom of the barrel, which was pretty neat. Pretty neat thing, I thought. And it just slides. Ah. 
gently right back out. Okay, so when you shoot this, just basically put, pull the hammer to half cock, make sure your nipple's clear, dump 60 grains down. I put a little bit on my finger, I put a little bit of lube around the base of the bullet, because I'm going to shoot it right then and there. And your first one will go down easy, but then after you fire it a bit, you know, there is some resistance, you got to tamp it down. And that's all you got to do, just a little bit of lube on them. Put them in there, and away they go. It's a lot of fun. You can fire the gun fairly quickly, you know, if you had the bullets pre-lubed. Uh, I just do it for fun. You know, I don't, I don't get into speed or, or competition or going out target shooting. But the gun, I was lucky. This one, the sights are on, and it shoots well. And uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to run the videos where I took it out for a day at 50-yard range.